But this is a good one because it's about, there's actually two problems here. And the fact is this person had contacted us months ago. But this one concerns someone that has a young German Shepherd and when they correct the dog it pees and it chews things up. So they had contacted Cindy five or six months ago. Cindy recommended a couple of things that they could do and a couple of our online courses, one of them being totally free, which is how we manage, how Cindy and I manage dogs in our home. Unfortunately, I don't think this woman watched any of them, but I guess that's not that uncommon. So anyway, I'm gonna read it because I think this, this peeing issue is way more common than people think. It's very common with young puppies, and I'm gonna talk about it. First, I'll read the question. That Cindy, we got a German Shepherd puppy at the age of four weeks. We were told he was eight weeks old back in August of last year. Every time we correct the puppy, he pees on the floor, as well as now he's chewing up items that do not pertain to his toys. What could be the cause of all this? I have a feeling it's separation anxiety. It's not. He only chooses things that have our scent on them. Interesting. It's not separation anxiety though. It's handler error. Sorry, it is. He's now 11 months old. What can we do to prevent this from continuing? Any suggestions or ideas? A lot of them. Don't want to continue kenneling him each time he's doing something wrong. That's good, because it's the wrong thing to do in this case. When he's done something wrong, we call his name and he immediately knows to go to the kennel, as well as peeing on the floor when he's going to the kennel. Is this something that we should change or what should we do differently? Please advise. Thank you. <laughs> Cindy says, and it's the truth. This is submissive urination. And the dogs don't have control over submissive urination. It happens a lot with young puppies. And it's, it's almost an instinctual thing. Dogs that do this don't even know, the most of them, they don't even know they're doing it. And when I say it's, a, it's like a genetic thing. And I'll use an example of, of a wolf pack. You've got your wolf leaders, the pack leaders, female and a male. And when the younger or lower ranking dogs approach one of the pack leaders to show their respect, they will squat and pee. And in that scenario has nothing to do with these dogs being corrected. It's just a sign that shows that they recognize the higher rank within their pack and they squat and take a pee. Now with dogs, that's exactly what a young puppy's doing and a lot of times they'll outgrow it. But I'll tell you what will not fix it, taking a dog and trying to correct it for submissive urination. For people that are not dog trainers, maybe a good way to wrap your mind around this is think of, uh, let's say your grandmother is getting older and she gets incontinent. If you don't know what that means, they have to wear pads because they can't control their bladder. No amount of correcting is gonna stop your grandmother from being incontinent. They can't control it. And it's the same thing with dogs like this. And if you correct this dog every time it does it, it's only gonna get worse. It's not gonna get better through correction. Puppies will outgrow it. Usually they outgrow it. Some dogs are more susceptible to submissive urination. Cocker Spaniels, Golden Retrievers, Dash Hounds. But that doesn't mean that I've had German Shepherd puppies in my breeding career that would do this for a while. And it's like I said, if it's handled poorly by the owners, and by that I mean correcting them, when they're doing them, grabbing them, throwing them in the crate, making them go in the crate when they do it, it could last their whole life. Hopefully it doesn't. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more of, of this, 
on the subject of submissive urination before I get into this dog talking about chewing things up. And I did a little bit of research on submissive urination. And I'll, and I'll read you some of the notes that I took because they're interesting. So it's submissive or excited urination is an involuntary behavior. And that's important to remember. It's like I said, these dogs don't know that they're doing that. Your dog isn't making a conscious decision to pee. It just can't control itself and it squats down and pees. Which is why most owners' efforts to try and correct it, they don't work. It just flat does not work. So, let me go on. When he wets, in response to an interaction with a person, it's his way of showing submission and telling the person that, I know you're the boss. This isn't really the way that we want to get the message across to our dog to have him show submissive urination, but it's the way they do it instinctually. Submissive and excited peeing is common in young puppies and in shy, sensitive, and insecure dogs. That's really common. They go on and talk about the various breeds that I've already mentioned. Many puppies grow out of this submissive urination as they get older and develop better bladder control. But for some dogs, the problem continues into adulthood and even develops in later ages as the dogs get older. This behavior can be one of the more frustrating problems to fix since correcting the dog will intimidate it more and make them feel more submissive, not less submissive. Soothing the dog will only make him feel <laughs> like he's doing the right thing. So what it's basically saying is, oh, if your dog is peeing, oh, you're okay, don't feel so concerned about me. That's not the way the dog's reading it. If you do that to your dog, he's thinking, oh, okay. They're rewarding me for peeing, so I'm gonna do it a little bit more. So this is a, <laughs> if you correct them, it's gonna cause a problem. If you, if you baby them and try and calm them down, it's gonna cause it to happen more. You're better off just to ignore it. Try and think of what scenarios your dog is doing this, and then take a, an aloof attitude around the dog, like a, okay, let's just go, you know, let's go do this. You know, you don't have to scold them, you have to ignore it. And if it's a problem, you're gonna to have to figure out how you're gonna manage this dog in your house. Are you going to have an X-Pen? Where the dog stays in the X-Pen, and when it's time to go outside, you open it up and get him outside as quick as you can without stopping to pet him or make him sit down or do whatever. Just go open the door, open the door, get the leash on him. By the door, I mean the door to the x pen or the door to the crate and get him outside as quick as you can. At least that's the way I've always handled it myself. But the point that they make here too, and it is a good point that I hadn't brought up yet, is most submissive urinators are very susceptible or sensitive to people's body language and the tone of your voice, which is why I said the way we do it is just to act relaxed, don't act upset, just go get the dog, clip the leash on him, walk him away, don't communicate with him, don't talk to him, don't scold him, don't sound excited, just go get him, okay, we're going outside and you walk and you get them outside where they can pee outside. It's a lot easier if they're doing submissive urination in your yard than it is on your rug in your living room. So you'll figure it out or you'll get end up getting rid of the dog. That's the part on submissive urination. The part on chewing, that's an owner problem. That's a management problem. There really is, if, if you're managing your dog correctly by using a dog crate, by using an X-Pen in your house, and controlling the environment that you put your dog in, you're not gonna have this problem. These people aren't controlling their dog enough if it's going and chewing up items. How can that happen if you've got your eyes on your dog? How can it happen if you have a leash on your dog? And in the videos that I've produced, I talk about how to, how to transition a puppy from an X-Pen by using the X-Pen, by using a dog crate, by keeping a dog on leash, some people never think of the fact that, hey, keep your dog on leash in the house. It's not gonna chew something up. 
if the dog is tethered to you on a leash in your house. There's nothing wrong with that. They can't go over there and chew up a sock if it's on a leash with you. And if you don't have time to keep it on a leash, put them in the X-Pen. Put some toys or something like that in the X-Pen or in the dog crate to keep your dog busy. But when it's out, keep your eyes on the dog all the time. And I say this in all these videos, how long does it take your puppy or your dog to go behind your couch and take a leak? About five damn seconds, that's how long it is. So it's not a dog problem, it's a people problem here. It's a management problem here. And sloppy management is only going to allow your dog to practice bad behavior, okay? And that's what's going on here. You can control it right in the beginning and never let it happen and then you don't have a problem. But if you let it go on, on an eight month old dog and it's been going on for how long? That dog has practiced bad behavior for months. To try and correct that takes a lot of work. There's an old saying, I think, how did, I, how did that used to go? It's a lot easier to train a behavior the correct way in the beginning, and if you have to then, don't, if you haven't done that and you already have a problem, it takes a hundred times more work to go back and fix a problem you've allowed to happen. So that's the key there. And what I mentioned in this video is we do have a free online course on our website where I explain how Cindy and I live with our four dogs. And I think at the time uh, that I did that video, we actually had five dogs and unfortunately, our older Melanwa passed away a year ago and he was 14 or 15 years old. It's terrible. But go there, look at it. I really need to put some additional information into that course. I put that course up for two reasons, for free. For two reasons, number one, to help people like this to let them go in there and see how professional dog trainers live with their dog. And the second reason is so people can see the quality of information they can get from our online courses. I don't know how many online courses I've done right now. I've been producing dog training videos since 1982. So that, <laughs> that's over 40 years. It's amazing, it just seems like yesterday. But if you have any questions, Go to the front of Learberg.com, scroll down to the Ask Cindy. She answers the questions that you send out every day. The only time she doesn't answer them is she's on the road to a dog event or visiting one of her friends. But she will answer it. And sometimes, and she's done it here, I just didn't go into it. Sometimes they don't have enough information in the original question and she'll come back at you and say, hey, tell me a little bit more here. What about this? What about that? How are you handling this with your dog? And then they'll answer her and she'll give them a better answer. We record all those questions in our database. Some of the questions go into the public part of the database. So there's over 3,500 Q&As in there that are searchable. You can search on it and maybe you'll find an answer to your problem if you have a problem. Not all of them go in there. And we try and pick some that are pretty common, like this one. Submissive urination is, a, is a, a very common thing that people that get dogs for the first time, and they might be a little shy if it's a rescue dog or if it's a puppy. They don't understand what's going on and they think they can rub their nose in it. No, that's the wrong thing to do. That's only making it worse. So if you have a question, write us, we'll answer it. If we can help you, we will.